This is section 7-4, it's lengths of curves. Uh, we start out with a sine wave. So say, how long is a sine wave in figure 7.32? The usual, usual meaning of wavelength refers to the fundamental period, which for y equals sine of x is 2 pi, but how long is the curve itself? If you straightened it out like a piece of string along the positive x-axis with one end at zero, where would the other end be? Or you could say if you started walking along a, a, a sidewalk that was in the shape of the wave of sine, how long would you walk when you're done? Well, we start out by drawing a little segment, a little secant line. And we use the Pythagorean theorem to come up with the length of that line. And it's the change in x squared plus the change in y squared equals the length squared that we want. Well, we end up squaring the length squared to get this little formula right here. And the delta means the change in x, how x is changing versus how y is changing. Now imagine making these little lines infinitely small and adding up an infinite amount of them. Uh, once you get to that infinite point, you're following the line along perfectly. Well, if you're going to add them all up, that's really summation notation. So we're going to uh, add up all of these little line segments. And they're going to be infinitely small and infinitely many. Well, we do a little algebra here. If you multiply by delta x sub k and divide by delta x sub k, you really haven't changed the problem. They cancel each other out. And then if you square root the bottom squared, that allows you to put everything under the radical. So you can have one radical. And notice these are two are now exactly the same, which makes one. And then over here we have delta, uh, change in y squared over change in x squared. Well, that is the slope of the tangent line, which is derivative. So the summation, when we take everything to infinity, is really the integral. This is like a Riemann sum, really. Uh, the delta y squared over delta x squared is the derivative of y. And what I forgot to write, it's not just the derivative of y. It's the derivative of y squared. The change in y over the change in x is slope of the tangent line. It's derivative. And then delta x, this is Greek. In Roman notation, it becomes dx. So here's the formula for the length of a curve. In example one, we want to find the length of a sine wave. What is the length of the curve y equals sine x from 0 to 2 pi? Well, that's the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the square root of 1 plus cosine squared x. And the reason it's cosine squared is because the derivative of sine is cosine. And to finish out this problem, uh, we just entered it, it into the calculator using FNINT. The answer ends up being 7.64 feet or inches or centimeters or whatever units we're in. In example two, we're applying the definition. Find the exact length of the curve, y equals this mess, for 0 to 1. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 1 the square root of the derivative squared. And the derivative of this whole function is 3 halves times 4 times the square root of 2 over 3x to the 1 half. You know, we reduce the power by 1. That'd be, uh, okay, uh, we multiply by 3 halves first. Excuse me, I'm thinking integral for a second. Uh, we multiply by 3 halves and then we reduce the power by 1. So the 3's cancel out, the 4 and the 2 cancel out to 2. So you have 2 squared of 2x to the 1 half. That's exactly what we have over here. But remember, we're going to square this. 2 squared is 4. Squared of 2 squared is 2. And x to the 1 half squared is just x. So underneath it ends up being 1 plus 8x. Well, if we let u equal 1 plus 8x, du equals 8. That's the derivative. And we don't have uh, an 8 dx, so we divide by 8, make it 1 8 du equals dx. Do a little substitution. Not only have I done substitution, I've uh, changed the, the limits of integration. If you plug 0 into 1 plus 8x, you just get 1. If you plug 1 into 1 plus 8x, you get 9. Well, the antiderivative of the square root of u is 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. 
Now, if you put 9 in there, the square root of 9 is 3. 3 squared is 27. If you plug a 1 in here, you just get 2 thirds. And in this step, I factored out the 2 thirds, made 27 minus 1, 26. Uh, the 2 would cancel with that, uh, 8, leaving 4. So we have 1 12th times 26, which ends up being 13 6. In example 3, we have a vertical tangent. Find the length of the curve, y equals x to the one-third, between the point negative 8, negative 2, and 8, 2. Well, if you take the derivative of the function, remember, we're going to have to do that in order to uh, complete the formula for the length of a curve. You get one-third x to the negative two-thirds, which is 1 over 3x to the two-thirds. Well, the, the first derivative doesn't exist at x equals 0. That would make the bottom 0. And if we integrate from negative 8 to 8, 0 is going to be one of those values. So that's definitely going to be a problem. So what we do is uh, we, instead of having a function in x, we have a function in y. So if you solve for x by taking uh, both sides to the third power, you get x equals y to the third. Now when you take the derivative, you have 3y squared, and uh, the function will be, the derivative will be defined for all values of y. So instead of integrating from negative 8 to 8, we're just going to integrate from negative 2 to 2. And we're going to square this derivative. So everything is done in y now uh, rather than in x. And uh, then we go to our calculator, plug it in, you get 17.261. In order to get around a corner, if you look at uh, this equation right here, we're going to find the length of the curve y equals x squared minus 4 absolute value of x minus x. Well, since the absolute value of x is involved in the problem, there's going to be a corner somewhere. And that's going to be a problem with the derivative because derivatives don't exist at corners. Now, the way we get around that, uh, we're going to use the definition of absolute value. The definition is if uh, you have the absolute value of x, it's going to be the same if x is positive. For example, if you put a positive 5 in here, the answer is going to be 5 when you take the absolute value. Uh, it's opposite of the x if x is less than 0. So if you plug in a negative 7, the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. It comes out as the opposite value uh, if it's negative. So we end up with two equations. y equals x squared minus 4x minus x if x is positive. See, if, it's, if uh, the x is positive, this really isn't going to change. So it just becomes x squared minus 5x. Now, if x is negative, then this term is going to have an opposite. It's going to be the opposite of negative 4x. It's going to be plus 4x. So we have x squared plus 3x when we combine the like terms. Now we just split it from negative 4 to 0. So if our values are negative, we're going to use the derivative of x squared plus 3x. And if the values are positive, if we integrate from 0 to 4, we're just going to use the top one, the derivative of x squared minus 5x. And from there on, uh, we use uh, the calculator. I've done the first integral, added the answer to the second integral. You get 19.556.